Hello amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So first of all, Mr. Roaring Lion here had some queries for me regarding cross-site scripting. Thank you very much for those queries, they are much useful to me. So as you saw in there, my English is not perfect either. Uh, so don't worry about it guys, please don't apologize, I don't mind at all. It's not about the language we speak, we all speak cross-site scripting on this channel, don't we? He asks, sir, I am trying to automate cross-site scripting with a different way from other GitHub codes. Is it useful or not? So first of all, that question, no, it's not useful in my opinion to automate looking for cross-site scripting in this way. Why not? Because cross-site scripting, well, let's go back to the basics first. You have reflected cross-site scripting on the source base and on the DOM base. You have stored cross-site scripting on the reflected and on the DOM base. So how do you look for these types of vulnerabilities? Well, for DOM, you look for the DOM sinks. If you're looking for uh, the source base, you look for the source sinks, of course. Then you look in which specific context you are being reflected. Of course, you have your basics, the HTML injection, the HTML tag attribute injection. You have your um, JavaScript injection, but there are many, many more different contexts in which injection can occur. So as you can see, all of these steps are not easy, for especially if we as humans think it's hard to understand them. How are you going to explain a computer on what to use for them? Now, your automation and what most automations like this will probably do is they'll try and throw every single cross-site scripting and tech factor known to man at an endpoint blindly hoping for something to trigger. This is why I'm saying it's not very useful to automate it using these cross-site scripting um, polyglots probably that you're finding online. Now, I am not a big fan of polyglots as they'll trip up almost any WAF. So if you have a WAF, if it's something that's filtering it out, it's going to get triggered. That's why I'm not a big fan. Um, as for automation, if you throw a lot of stuff at a single endpoint, eventually you might find something, but it's going to be pure dumb luck. And that's not what we want, of course. So he says, also, I can solve cross-site scripting games and everything related with XSS, but I can't find a single bug related with it in real world. I expect some tips from you uh, that you used to test for the XSS. So that's what I've been testing for. Now, the difference between a cross-site scripting game and cross-site scripting in reality is thin. But it does exist because in a cross-site scripting game, you know you are looking for a vulnerability. And you know you're looking for a specific vulnerability, often on a specific endpoint as well. Usually that cross-site scripting game is going to be small. It's not going to be a full website with full functionality. That's where your difference lays. Finding that cross-site scripting endpoint, that hook, that injection that you have, that's going into the specific context. I mean, of course, that is going to be the difference between actually finding cross-site scripting and just dabbling around, throwing random strings at a endpoint. Um, now, of course, you need to know which endpoints do you tackle, so you tackle all of them. And I'm not even kidding. You actually tackle every single endpoint and you go through it. You see, okay, do I have a reflection here? Um, is, it, is it reflected, is it stored, etc.? You go through your steps every single time. So that's why you probably haven't found anything on a real target yet. And also you need to pick your target carefully, of course, because, okay, you might be able to do a cross-site scripting game, but can you do cross-site scripting behind a WAF? That's a different story. Web application firewalls will trip up even the best cross-site scripting attackers, in my opinion. Um, one more important thing how, uh, I have to ask you, how can I bypass 302 responses from the server? So uh, let's look up 302 responses. I'm going to see, okay, exactly what is the status code for this? What does it mean? It's uh, a 302 found. So 302 found usually means that there is something and there's going to be a URL redirection for it. You're going to think about automations here, probably. While this 302 found, you're going to have to bypass it in a way that you have to follow the redirection. 
And then in the redirection, you're going to have to see, okay, did it actually trigger or did it not trigger? Or it might be that you actually have to check it on the 302 page itself. That's a possibility. So there's many different possibilities here. I might have said a few things wrong, but I'm very tired and I have to get back to work tomorrow. Um, that's pretty much what I think of cross-site scripting, how I test for it, all of the different contexts that you have to be aware of. And of course, where your um, reflected string will originate from, because reflections don't always just come from parameters, they can come from specific cookies as well. And if you as a user can influence the cookies of other users, you might be able to insert a cross-site scripting attack factor in there. I'm just thinking out loud here. There's many different possibilities, but thank you very much for, for asking this. This was a really good question and all of them pretty much. So thank you very much. And I hope I was able to answer your question adequately. If not, please let me know in the comments below or just let me know in the message, you know. Thank you very much and I will see you later, amazing hackers.